welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a newcomer into the temple. The mat, the, a, the madman currently, who has both fi who has both final age, as well as the developing bastard sword under under his belt, mm. along along with along with uh, along with a few uh, along with a few other projects. I'm not going to go through the whole list. Oh, and God, no. is currently developing legends and long swords. Some of you may know him as the Forever DM. Some of you may know him as Bear. I know him as the man sitting in my temple. How you doing tonight, man? Uh, hey there, hi there, oh there, I'm doing good. It's nice to be here. I uh, put some coins in the tithe box. They may or may not be lead. I haven't decided, I'm not going to reveal the secret. You'll find out when you go check that later, but otherwise doing just skippy. Yep. Oh. So, as I, as, as I understand it, Legends and Longswords is meant to, is meant to be your, your take on doing a, um, a fantasy game utilizing the D6 system from West End. Yeah, well, not so much the D6 system from West End, specifically the Mini 6 from uh, Anti-Paladin, but yeah, that's the legacy of Which, D6 from West yeah. End, yeah. Yeah, d I've I've just seen uh, Mini 6 as an, as an extension of that, since all that it is is fair. just D6 without the fat. Um, Very fair. So, what was... What was your introduction to the D6 system? Was it was it Mini 6 per se, or were you familiar with the West End era? I was actually familiar with the West End era. When I was in college, uh, I was running a uh, Marvel Phase Rip, Marvel Super Heroes game, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the players said, hey, have you heard about this Star Wars game? And I went, Star Wars game? And he brought it over and let me the books to read, and I'm like, okay, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And I just fell in love with it. I, I absolutely adored the system. Yeah, I've I cer I certainly have my fondness for it. Though um, the version that I always recommend to people when it comes to the Star Wars um, D6 is the re-up version. That's that was made by the community. It's a big beast. <laughs> it's a big it's it's a big beast. But um, I'd be I'd be. At least, at least it's easier to. At least it's pretty easy to navigate. And the big reason for me is, um, a lot of the a lot of the EU stuff came out mm -hmm. after D six happened. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, a lot of it did, but a lot of it's also based on D six, right? Never forget that. Um, yeah, Timothy Zahn was handed the box of everything from West End Games when he wrote Rise of the uh, Heir to the Empire, and they said, "Look here, just here's here's your source material." Yeah, the so, EU. I mean, you know, the EU and the and um D and D six have kind kind of this symbiotic relationship with each other. Yeah, they're like conjoined twins. It's really like they're just bizarrely connected, but um, separate individuals to be sure. But one of the bit one of the big ones that that I had to address on the fly that Reup ended up addressing was um one of my players asking asking about lightsaber forms. And yeah, <laughs> so yeah. when I when I asked around about it, somebody somebody said, "Well, ju we'll just have that, just have that as sk as skills." And I'm like, I'm not sure if that's completely satisfactory of just of just having it as a reflavored version of 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 a lightsaber skill or even a specialization therein. It, that just feels that just feels kind of numbers go sideways. Well, I'm a bit of a strange duck when it comes to Star Wars in that I don't give a flying fig about Jedi. That's why I like the um, Galactic Rise, you know, the Empire era, because there's none of them around, <laughs> so um, it's nice. Yeah, this was this was a partic this was a particular case because I was taking advantage of of um, when Knights of the Old Republic had originally come mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. instead instead of Break trying to instead of trying to fight the tide. Because I knew yeah. people would, I knew people would ask about Jedi. Just take advantage, take advantage of the situation. Um, oh yeah, yeah. But when it comes to the Jedi question, I'm always reminded of one of my favorite stories when it comes to Star Wars Galaxies, 
mm. the the MMO because Ralph Koster, whose book A Theory of Fun I believe is recommended reading, um, was adamant in not having Jedi in the game. Okay. And his reasoning, par- which I'm paraphrasing, is he felt Jedi would become an alpha class. Yes. And every everybody would ch- everybody would chase after it. Mm, I can agree with that. And given ha- given how Star Wars Galaxies is it has a, it has more in common with say with say EverQuest than it does World of Warcraft in terms of the type of MMO that it is, or even yes. Eve, in the sense that a lot of the a lot of the experience is is built on the player interactivity instead of a curated one. Um, Nerd yeah, Slayer, I, uh, yeah, yeah. Nerd Slayer calls this difference a theme park versus a sandbox. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I, I actually knew a bunch of ladies who played, and uh, they all made money dance or whatever the currency was in the game dancing as Twi'leks and uh, in some cantina. And I'm like, what? Really? Like what? This is a part of the game? Like essentially. <laughs> N- n- clothes strip clubs okay fascinating I'm, I'm not playing but sounds like fun you guys yeah. do you and surprisingly they were all larpers too so there's a shock mm-hmm. but eventually his hand was forced but he tried to he tried to make it complicated by by the mechanic of it you have to find holocrons but mm-hmm. um gamers being gamers it didn't take long mm-hmm. before holocron maps started showing up on forums and ca- kind of Kind of rendered that whole thing pointless. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's could, there's a few other yeah. there's a few. I'm simplifying the matter, but the point is is that um, he knew he knew that having a, having him would end up me- would end up messing with matters, and the that particular era, the new game experience, um, is looked at less fo- looked at less fondly because of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, I, 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 just... I, I, yeah, I, I never got into the Star Wars MMOs, but I heard a lot of crosstalk about them. That's for sure. Oh, and well, for for me, I'm, I had my time with get with galaxies, but I'm a researcher by by tr- by hobby and trade. Mm-hmm. Um, but what is in what is interesting about t- about taking that taking that approach is. There, there's. This is not the. This is not the first. My first rodeo when it comes to D six, and fantasy because there's actually been a handful of entries that use that use D six that the D six system, that are that yeah. are that. Um, yeah. I guess I guess one of the main things I'm I'm curious about is how reliant on on mini six is Legends and Longsword is going to be. Is it a case where it's going to be standalone, or is it treated as an extension of Mini Six? Well, originally it was going to be a standalone game, but then after speaking with Ray Nolan and I had him on my YouTube channel for for a four color cafe, and we talked with him about everything, um, I decided that it's going to be an extension to Mini Six, as in, okay, you want to use Mini Six to do a fantasy game? Here's a supplement for you. It's going to show you what rules changes to me. Here's expanded weapons tables. Here's a couple of different magic systems. Here's different racial templates, things like that. Uh, it's ultimately it's just going to be vanilla fantasy, and it's going to be free. Like I'm not going to charge money for this. Uh, I'm convinced. I'm, I'll just use stock art off of you know drive through RPG or whatever uh, to fill out the book. I've already got a cover uh, from Dean Spencer, which is you know just fantastically high caliber. Um, and that's it. I mean, this is not a money maker for me. This is not something. This is just my little pet project about something I've loved because I've run. A few now mini six fantasy uh, campaigns, little mini campaigns, and I just absolutely adore the system. So, mm-hmm. more love I can get towards mini six, the happier I'm going to be because I respect the hell out of what they did with that book. Yeah. Um. And I had I had to do I had to do a bit of du- a bit of double checking because I was trying to remember if if um if mini six brought brought in the wild die, which I don't I don't think it did. It's they did not. No. Um. And uh, and given given the you can you I think you kind of answered this, but given the fact that it's kind of going with the standard approach to fantasy, mm-hmm. um, there there was a, is it is the approach that you're taking based on the simple magic system 
that's that's in the that's in the core book or do you have a different kind of magic system in mind I have a couple of different ideas. I haven't fleshed them out or really explored them. Uh, the simple magic system is clearly broken. Even even Mr. Nolan admits that. It was just basically a, a portmanteau of the D6 fantasy, which the less said about that book, the better. Um, we So it's it's you're going to have to create a new magic system if you want it to be functional for someone to play a wizard, for example, yeah. or play a cleric. So well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure some stuff out and take some ideas. It won't yeah. be anything groundbreaking or revolutionary it'll just be functional yeah and you say you say wizard and and cleric but i doubt i doubt that you plan on on going with it going with any sort of class or archetype approach no i'm gonna take the uh, the, the star wars d6 mentality of having templates available right so here's how you build your character from scratch this is your dice pool for uh, attributes this is your dice pool for skills or you can just grab this template and customize it with, you know, five dice or whatever the case may be, like we used to do in Star Wars. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. come on. Who didn't want to be the brash fighter pilot? Uh, I think the, I think the, I think the last time I did, I did a care, I did a character in Star Wars, the, the approach I took was, what if, what if Star Wars, but through, but through the eyes of Lupin? What is Lupin? Um, Ar Arsene Lupin. That's new one kind, for me. Kind of the pa kind of the patient zero for the phantom thief archetype. Oh, Lupin! Yeah, 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 Lupin. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm completely gaijin. <laughs> I'm I'm, I, I'm so not even good with Japanese pronunciations. Yeah, yeah, Lupin. Yeah, Lu yeah, yeah. Lupin's we used to watch not that in French. Yeah, Lupin's not Japanese. He's French. Well, we used to watch it in French in Quebec, so I always thought it was an anime. I always thought for some reason Lupin was an anime from Japan. Oh, well, it, uh... well, it became it became one, but that's a whole other oh. story. Oh. And, and that and that particular thing what is um, Lupin the Third, which yes, that's that's the one I know. Yeah, which kind of teases with whether or not um, that the Lupin in that one is the grandson of of the original Arsene. There was okay. there was a story with Arsene crossing over and meeting Sherlock Holmes, but that is mm. but um that is not acknowledged by Do by Doyle and was considered unofficial. Hmm. Um. Interesting. And yeah, I just looked him up here on Wikipedia. French writer Maurice Leblanc in 1905. Mm. Yep. Like I said, like I said, I'm a bit. I've mentioned this over the over the years since I've been doing this thing. I'm I'm a bit of a historian. But I want I wanted to do to I've always had a fondness for that for that whole well planned um, att attempt to steal something. Mm hmm. The heist. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I lo I loved the remake of of Ocean's Eleven from the from the early two thousands, just as an example. Right. Yeah. Fun film. But when it comes to magic systems, which is actually going to be the topic of dis of discussion on the geek watch podcast this sunday mm -hmm. uh, there's a there's obviously a lot of ways that one can that one can go about it yes um, and one thing that what what i'm curious what i'm curious about for starters is do you do you plan on have ma having magic use be a, be a form of skill and also do you plan on having it that it's it's going to require its own resource. Okay, so for my type of magic that I like to do, I have I have three systems I like to do. I call them uh, spellbinding, sorcery, and channeling. And all of them are based around the idea of a mana pool or an anima pool or a pool of M and M's, whatever it is the, the 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 resource you're using. And the spellbinding is all about using recipes, right? You're baking a cake, you're baking a loaf of bread, so you'll always pay the exact same mana every time, and it's going to be a little bit less because you're being efficient and you know how to do it, but there's not a lot of creativity. You're just repeating a spell unless you write one yourself. Uh, the sorcery is more like what we find in the Belgariad, the will and the word, the idea that you are just taking the energy of the universe and forming it to your will and then forcing it out to do something. And that's messy and that's dirty and it eats a lot of mana because it's not, you know, it's just not clean. It's not a clean running, uh, engine as it were. And then the last one channeling is where you spend mana to extra dimensional beings 
gods, powers, demons, devils, whatever it may be, and you're paying that mana to them to give you the power you require at that point in time. So it's always a negotiation. So in a game terms, let's say uh, all three were going to cast a fireball, and I'll just use random numbers that don't mean anything. A spellbinder might pay four mana because he's using this, this the this fireball spell. It'll always do this much damage. It'll have this much range. It'll do this, 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 and this. End of story. A sorcerer trying to control the universe to mag, mag, um, manifest a fireball will have to spend more. He might even spend upwards of six or seven mana because it's very dirty and he's trying to pull the energy of the universe together and that's taking personal energy out of him to get it done, but he can also spend more mana to give, make it do more damage, to make it bigger, to make it go further, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it can get really taxing really, really fast because they're not going to have infinite mana pools. Mm -hmm. A channeler will then negotiate with, say, a god of fire or an elemental from the, the, the plane of elemental fire or a demon in hell, whatever way he's getting his fire and say, I want to have a fireball and i want it to go this far and i want it to do this much damage and i want you to give me that power and then the demon will say well you know that's going to cost you this much mana and he's going to say well i'm going to pay you this much and then all three of them will have to make a casting roll mm -hmm. the spellbinder just has to roll versus the difficulty of his spell he succeeds the sorcerer will have to roll versus his difficulty probably plus one level of difficulty because of the way he does things <clears throat> and also the difficulty will increase by the amount of m extra he wants it to do. Whereas the channeler will have to make their casting roll, and it's less a, well, I'm going to make the casting roll to pull off the spell. It's more of a, are you going to agree to my terms type of situation. So they're all making a roll to achieve what they want. They will all have consequences for failing their roll. And the most dangerous one is probably the sorcerer who has the potential to explode versus the spellbinder who just loses the mana because he didn't cast the spell correctly. He missed, you know, he didn't cross the T, he didn't dot the I. Or the channeler who may offend and now have made an enemy of this extra dimensional creature that is now going to start sending fire demon hell dogs after him to extract revenge until he humbles himself before them. Mm-hmm. So that's sort of the way my brain goes on it. I haven't written yeah. it down, haven't worked it out, but this is how I want it to be. Yeah, and I'm get I'm guessing I'm guessing within that you'd you'd want you'd want to put in met put in methods for spe for spell customization and the like, because mm -hmm. uh, a com which is which I'm glad that that's something you've con you've put into consideration because a common trap that ends up happening is people uh, making a big ass spell list. Yeah. And not thinking about um, customizing it beyond just house rule it, which in that I've I've mentioned this on some of my streams in the past. House ruling should be a spice, not the main dish. You shouldn't be the sauce. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I agree. It's the it's the oregano. Mm -hmm. It's it's the the garlic. It's the chili powder. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a thing that was posted on um, RPG.net years ago called the Mini Six Simpler Magic System. Sadly, the guy who posted it has been banned off of RPG.net, so I can't get a hold of him. So if he's listening, hey, I'd like to talk to you. But Ray Nolan says that he's spoken to him, and he gave Ray permission to put this magic system in uh, Mini 6-2 when it comes out. Mm -hmm. And the way he did it was very simple. He had categories of qualities of this much damage, this much range, how many people to fit, whatever the case may be. So when you're trying to make your spell... You work out all the factors, and then whichever one has the highest difficulty on the chart, which isn't a big chart, it's like three categories, four categories mm -hmm. of difficulty, that's the difficulty for you to cast that spell. So that's a really good one for what I want to do with the sorcery idea, because it's very, you know, make it up on the spot and have fun. Mm -hmm. For spellbinders to write their own spells, well, that's going to be a process of research and arcana and all that kind of stuff, and we'll just make a very, very simple system for that. Yeah. There will be a spell list, obviously, of spells they can know in advance, but if they want to customize those spells, they're going to have to spend time doing it beforehand. Mm -hmm. They can't customize it on the fly. And then last for the Chandler, they'll probably have the similar thing to the Spellbinder, which is pick the spell off the list you want, but have the ability to do customization as if they were using the spontaneous caster rules. Yeah. So that'll give them the base cost. Like, okay, you want to do the fireball? Well, it costs four mana according to this. Okay, but I want it to do this, this, and this. Okay, well, that's going to add this much cost, and now your difficulty is this. But they're less likely to explode and take up the castle. Yeah. 
admittedly, when you mentioned the way you described that third um, type, mm -hmm. the first thing that ended up coming to mind for me, oddly enough, is hucksters in Deadlands. Ooh, yeah, that would be, yeah, that's a way of looking at it for sure, yeah. Oh. And you could easily have a character who does something like that, who uses playing cards or uh, tarot cards as their focus. And now that we discuss it, I think I want channelers now to have a focus that they have to channel their magic through. And so I, thank you. That's awesome. And personally, I'm I'm always I'm always in favor of a um of a spell of a spell user having some sort of of focus. Mm -hmm. Doubly so if there's multiple options for focus, but each of them is going to denote a certain playstyle. I think I I remember do I remember doing it in a, in a different game where if you you could have a an orb a tome or a wand, mm -hmm. but each of each of those um, each of those foci would ha would impose different modifiers. Mm -hmm. Like if if you had an orb, um, it was it it was a lot easier for you to do to put to put a, to put more AOE kind of stuff, you know, more right. wi more wide sweeping spells, but mm -hmm. um, si but you couldn't do single target. Sure, um, yeah, I wands. Can see that. The, it's the opposite, and tomes. The the tomes are for those would are for those who would say, "I like spells, so I want more. So I want spells in my spells, so I can cast while I cast." <laughs> you know, the the whole thing with them is they is just having sheer ver, sheer variety, but not but not being able to mess with it. Well, now okay, now take that idea further, and imagine you've got an ex priest who's using a bell, a book, and a candle to control demons to give him powers from hell. Yeah. But the, the book does one thing, the bell does a different thing, the candle does a different thing. So, yeah, I like where you're going with that. It's all really good ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've, had, I've had some people say that, 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 that that's a little bit too, a little bit too video gamey, to, and to that I say, clearly you don't know your history. <laughs> um, <laughs> well... You know, That's the truth of role players the world over. I'm sorry to say, you know. Um. Uh, well, I've, I um, you you probably noticed by now. I don't. I have not, and never will refer to myself as as an o, as an OSR or as an old school gamer or anything like that. And myself as well. The big re the big reason for that is well, for one, I don't want I don't like limiting myself, and two, a lot of the a lot of the o a lot of the OSR talk feels um, feels like religious scholar talk about what about the mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. the intent about the intent of the original des of the original mm -hmm. design as if there's some grand mystery. I've I've compared it to I've compared it to the talk of religious scholars who I who I find yeah. this talk in circles way way too much and it's absolutely grating. I, I find it you similarly. I find it's like talking to philosophers who have a school of philosophy that they ascribe to. So everything has to fit within that particular school of philosophy. And if you you try and say, well, that does no, oh, but if you look at it this way, and it's just like, oh my god, I'm constantly my neck doesn't bend that far, you know, it just doesn't. So it's the same thing, right? Yeah. And I've had the I've had the pleasure or misfortune of knowing a lot of PhDs in my lifetime, never science PhDs, always, you know literature and philosophy and things like that so it's a lot the of discussion a lot of a lot of self-flagellation the kind the kind of folk who would get who would who would completely fall for the so-called hoax well it's it's the yeah so it's the it's the the arrogance of of knowledge right so i i, I it's the i know a lot about this one subject therefore i must know a lot about every subject yeah and it's like mm, no and I will admit some of it is hol is holding a bit of a grudge because I had the audacity, the ab the absolute fucking gall to not to not get on the hate wagon for thi for things like um, Tome of Battle back back in back in the day. Ah, Be because I I would hear a lot of people say ab about how it w about how it was stepping on the toes of casters, which I find absolutely ridiculous because. Um, Especially when casters can yeah no, der can derail a whole game. Oh yeah. But yeah. the big but the bigger thing was some some folk taking umbrage with it with it taking a lot of inspiration from 
video games and ma and manga. And I had I had said at the time you're going to be dealing with you are eventually going to be dealing with a whole generation who did not get their start reading Robert E. Howard, Fritz Lieber, yeah. and Michael yeah. Moorcock. Um, yeah. To I didn't bring up to I didn't bring up Tolkien because this was around the time the movies were out, so that was so that would have been a bad example. Sure. But they were go they were going to get they were going to get inspiration from from these other materials that are that yeah. were viewed as for verboten, and some of those people would probably would just law of averages become game designers. Absolutely. I mean, we're dealing with a generation of role players right now who have, who didn't come up on Fritz Lieber or Michael Moorcock or anything. So they came up on Harry Potter. And you know, a lot of the, <laughs> no. a lot of the stuff, a lot of the stuff in that that was in Gygax and Arneson's work is just stuff that they happen to be fans of. Oh, absolutely. It's not gospel, and that's why uh, I feel that since first edition AD and D there have been tremendous innovations in how gaming works though I, I am finding myself turning a corner and coming back at Thacko and going oh I see the use of it now mm -hmm. uh, I do think that you know there's 5e even has some great ideas in it 4e had some great ideas in it and this idea that we're going to limit ourselves from the best ideas is absolute gamer tribalism and I am super opposed to gamer tribalism because technically we're already a tribe we're gamers um, why do we need to subdivide further yeah, and I've, I've, co I've, um, I've, co I've, 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 I've always found it to be a, a, either an irony or hypocrisy, depending on how you want to look at it, that a co that a culture that that was all about volunt voluntarily, um, shifting away from the from the mainstream is wor is worried about acceptance, mm -hmm. um, or in or in some cases. That um, focused on this idea of how you're supposed to do things. We even here in the temple, we even call it designed by gospel. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, and it, which which is that whole, the whole thing of we have to do things a certain way because we've always done things a certain a certain way. Uh, and I don't. I ascribe I ascribe to more of. You're, you should do it. A, you should do it this way, a certain way, if it fits the overall goal. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Now, one of the, one of the main one of the main form one of the main avenues of customization within um, Mini Six is it is the whole for, is first off the whole thing with with um, character points and hero points. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the other uh, the other avenue is um, perks and complications. I'm guessing that for this one you're you're going to have a list of of both that are exclusive to legends and long swords. Yes, I'm going to definitely be uh, I like to call them banes and boons, but certainly perks and complication works just as well if you use the mini 6 vernacular and I'm going to develop my own that I think are good and I'm going to crib from a lot of different sources and a lot of different games and look at ideas and try and sort of go I like that, I don't like that, what have you and make, you know, my lists. Mm -hmm. Um but it's also like like it's the whole like there's an entire contingent of uh D6 that hate the wild die. I think it's a fantastic tool, uh, but it requires tweaking. You can't just use it as in on a six, it explodes on a one bad things happen. Cause that means there's a one in six chance of either being fantabulous or one in six chance of being absolute shite. But if you just add one little factor to it, which I do, which is okay. You roll the one on the, this, the, 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 the wild die, roll it again. If it comes up a one now, something bad happens. If it comes up any other number, just subtract that from your total. Yeah, you know, and it's it, it works much better that way. So this is again the way that we have to break the grognardy paradigm of I don't like it, taint right, taint right, don't like it. No, you got to find a way to make it work because hmm. if you can find a way to make it work, it's only going to enhance your play. Nothing drives me more up the wall than listening to quote unquote old school gamers talking about how it's not about the character, it's about the player's knowledge and the play. It's not, it's not an endurance test. It's not survival in the forest. You're not a better man because you can play D and D better. Relax, buddy. Yeah. It's a game. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be a good time. It's not meant to be a judgment of who you are as a human being or how smart you are. I have friends who play fantastic wizards over the years. Supposedly the smartest class in D and D, right? Mm -hmm. but I would never want to have them do my taxes. 
So maybe we can stop trying to treat the character as the player and let the character be the character and let the rules of the game benefit the character. So I'm going to come up with great boon, banes and boons for that. I'm going to come up yeah. with, you know, I'm going to use the mid, the wild die. I'm going to use all these things because they're tools. And the, if you choose your tools correctly, you'll make a great end result. Yeah. For, for me, the, the whole... I f the whole thing of 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 don't, of don't let of don't like it um <laughs> i i will admit a bit i will admit enjoying a bit of um a bit of fucking with with people like that because i will ask them okay okay what is it that you don't what is it that you don't <laughs> like and usually it ends up going down it ends up falling into um it be it being di it being different i'm like really that that's the best you got <laughs> um <laughs> And usually, usually, it usually it's it's coupled with with people talking about something being too complicated or too crunchy. Um, anytime someone complains about a game being too crunchy, I f I feel the urge to break out my copy of Phoenix Command and throw it at them. Yeah. <laughs> um, or Cyborg Commando. Or, or e or even um even just just some of the ri just some of the really simulationist stuff mm. that came out of the nineties. Um, oh, dude, we don't even have to go to deal with that. We can go to 1991 and take this holy grail of all of them, which is the Rule Cyclopedia. That is a crunchy, crunchy book. Yeah, although um, whenever whenever the Rule Cyclopedia is brought is brought up, I'm always reminded of the of um how different the Japanese version of it looked, especially when oh, yeah? especially when people. Have the, have the discussions about what sort about what sort of fantasy you're supposed to do, and you're not supposed to be bringing in this anime shit into 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 fantasy gaming. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, here here's the here's the Japanese rule cyclopedia that is do, that is doing all that is doing all of that. And yeah. That and I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up um, Record of Lodos War start starting out mm -hmm. as a D and D campaign. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I started, and it was the I've read them too. They're really interesting. The uh, replays. What do they call the replays? Yeah, they're really interesting. Unfortunately, they cut off at like this moment where it's like I want to know what happens next. Where's the rest? But you know, say la vie. Um, um yeah. Lodos yeah, was event, was adapted into not was transferred into light novels, and several of those mm -hmm. have been translated by fans. Oh yeah, oh, I'll have to look for that. So the, I, uh, I have. I have that. I have that in my. I have that in my archives. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Um, but the the other the other thing is obviously what obviously weapons are going to be expanded. But do you do you plan on ex, do you plan on expanding how um wep, how weapons work? I'm not saying put the weapon speed thing thing, but no. some sort but some sort of um exp, some sort of expansion on how on how weapons work. I like what they do in uh, old school essentials where you have uh, weapon qualities, I think they call them or descriptors. So like slow, you know, two handed, you know, uh, piercing or whatever. They, they, they've got a bunch of them. They're really, really cool. Uh, like for, if you have a slow weapon, no matter what you rolled for initiative, too bad, Charlie, you're going last in the round because mm -hmm. it's slow. Um, and I like that. So I want to bring that into, uh, the mini, the mini six into legends and long swords, because I really just feel it adds weapon. Okay. In dungeons and dragons, there is no point to weapon choice, right? It's, it's everything ultimately does the same. It's, it's very little difference, right? It's just the amount of damage you might do. And that's about it. Uh, I like the way in old school essentials they made weapon choice a part of, you know, you're kidding yourself out. Okay, well, what are you going to choose? Why are you choosing this weapon? Why are you choosing that weapon? I want the damage, but I know I'm going to be slow. I want a short weapon because I know we're going to be crawling around in tunnels, you know? I want a weapon with reach because I know we're going to be on the battlefield in an open place, and I want to make sure I keep the goblins 10 feet away from me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I really, really like that aspect of it. Now, I don't think it goes as far as that in my description here of what I'm saying. I don't think old school essentials goes that deep. But they get close, and that's something I want to represent or reflect in mini in uh, Le uh, Legends of Longswords using mini six. Mm -hmm. Now, with the, with that in, with that in mind, um, mm -hmm. I realize it, I realize it's a long ways, but um, how 
But um, what are you shooting for as far as a page count? Do you see do you see it not going over a hundred, or do you think do you think it'll go like a hundred and ten? I you know what I want to be able ultimately in the, at the end of the day to keep it uh, saddle stitched. I think is the term Lulu uses for the printing. So you can't go over, I think, 120 pages maximum at the end of the day. I think that's your limit on that book, or maybe 80. I can't remember what the number is. So whatever that number is, is going to be my maximum limit in size. Mm -hmm. If I come up and it's it's well under that, well, then we'll expand it with, you know, monsters and NPCs and, you know, stuff like that. If it's over, well, I'll have to look at ways to, to cut or maybe split it into two books. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's it's all blue sky Imagineer type stuff right now because I don't have, uh, I haven't even laid down the first. I mean, I put a couple of notes down and then I was like, nope, got to step back. Mm -hmm. So I don't even have that laid out. And I'll be honest, not that I want to get into this discussion, this weekend's little crisis that's running through the, uh, the, 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 the community has made me go, oop, I got to watch and see how this plays out because Mini 6 is based on the Open D6 license and the Open D6 license is based on the OGL 1.0. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, I got to wait for everything to play out. I can't just, you know, I don't want to do a thing. Now, ultimately, <clears throat> if it plays out negatively and against the community, I said I wasn't going to sell this, right? <laughs> I'm not making money off this. So I don't give a flying fuck. Send me a cease and desist for the free product I'm giving out. I'm in Canada. Come get me. <laughs> you know, like, good luck. Watsy well, doesn't even have an office in Canada. So come get me, son. You know, but otherwise, if it works out in our favor, well, then it'll be released under that type of a license as well. Yeah. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm not going to be charging a penny for it. Mm -hmm. I might put it up as pay what you want if anybody wants to support, you know, the effort that was put into mm -hmm. it. But otherwise, no, 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 no. Yeah. So yeah, I'd say probably about 100 pages, 120 pages, it all depends. But I don't know until I start writing. Yeah, uh, obviously. And I'll, I'll certainly be looking forward to seeing, how, to seeing how it develops. But with that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for coming out, coming all the way to my temple and enjoying the madness that happens around here. Well, astral projection is costly cross border, but it it worked out our our pleasure this time. Well, you're not cro you're not crossing the you're not crossing that much of a border. I mean, uh, given where I am, <laughs> fair enough. But <laughs> well, I'm in I'm in Quebec, so every time I leave, I'm crossing a border. You're not. I already I already have some I already have somebody in that region, in the, oh, uh, in my in sense. my inner circle. So so there's that, and that guy that guy owes me poutine. The next time I'm in Canada. Well, here you go. I'm going to do you a favor right now. I'm going to do you a mitzvah, and I'm going to teach you the proper way to not make people in Quebec turn their nose up at you when you talk to them. You don't call it poutine. You call it poutine. See, that when, I... we hear, when we hear the word poutine, we just go, oh, where the hell are you from? <laughs> um, yeah, that, that, I will that I will keep in, I will keep in mind. And, well, if, well, I can, I can, nope. I can all I can always I can always bring up the CN Tower lit lit up in Habs colors to redeem myself because that was There hilarious. you go. There <laughs> you go. I'll make you a deal right now. If you ever visit Montreal and I'm here, I will take you out for some lovely, lovely poutine. Mm -hmm. And I won't take you to the nonsense places that they send all the tourists and everybody says, Oh, this is the best ever poutine. It's not. It's <laughs> garbage. I'll mm -hmm. take you to the really good Hole in the wall, mom and pop restaurant run by a Greek family for three generations, and you'll eat their poutine, and you'll be like, "Oh my God, this is heaven." Yeah, I, I will. I will certainly hold hold you to that. Um, and anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As Appreciate I often it. say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> um, I. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty mm. more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the Good Brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!